public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in the court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network. A network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. Sunrise service in the Hollywood Bowl. The Easter Parade on Fifth Avenue. Colored eggs and baby rabbits. But what could it mean to a young girl in the women's section in the county jail in Los Angeles? I received an urgent call from Captain Brandt, head of the women's section of the county jail. Even though it was Easter, I didn't ask any questions. Nice suit, Mr. Matthews. Very becoming. Well, thanks. I figured it was right to wear for the occasion. Sorry to spoil it for you. You must have had a good reason. I have. Her name's Diane Collins. She comes up for arraignment tomorrow morning. What's she charged with? Suspicion GTM. No previous record, also no bank account. Well, there's nothing I can do, Captain, until the court appoints me. You're wrong, Bart. I'm worried for this girl. She's taking it too hard. Right now, she doesn't need a lawyer. She needs a friend. Someone to keep her from deciding there's only one way out. I see. I have a slip all made out. All you need to do is sign it. Thanks. Thanks, Captain. And Mr. Matthews. Yes? Happy Easter. Same to you, Captain. I'm Bart Matthews, the public defender. What's today? What day is it? Sunday. Easter Sunday. Easter? What difference does it make? I want to help you, Diane. I haven't any money. I can't afford a lawyer. They told me I'll get a public defender. Public defenders are lawyers, Miss Collins. I didn't know. Where are you from, Los Angeles? Oregon. Near Portland. Do you have any family? Mother or father? Oh, no, don't tell them. They mustn't know. Please, they mustn't know. Sit down, Diane. Take your hands off the rail. Now, Miss Collins, I want you to understand that everything you say is in strict confidence. Now, tomorrow morning, you'll be arraigned in court. But you won't be alone. I'll be there. Thank you. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of more questions? No. I understand the charge is grand theft merchandise. I'm not a thief, Mr. Matthews. That's right, Matthews. I didn't steal the coat. Very well. When the judge asks you how you plead, you say not guilty. I didn't steal it. I had permission to take it. Do you remember the name of the arresting officer? No. No, I don't. Well, as soon as I'm given the case, I'll go to work on it. Now, is there anything I could get for you? No, nothing. Are you sure? You're not talking to your lawyer now. I'm your friend. I'm sorry you saw me like this. But tomorrow, I'll have a nice dress on. I won't look so bad. You look fine. But there's something I... You won't laugh? Well, of course I won't. Would you mind bringing me a new lipstick? I'll bring you a dozen. Oh, thanks. As soon as Diane Collins had been arraigned the next morning and I had been appointed, I began my investigation. I called the city jail records and was told that a Diane Lee Collins had been booked the previous Tuesday evening on GT merchandise. Arresting officer, Sergeant Chet Posey, Wilshire Station. Diane Collins. You picked her up last Tuesday night. Oh, sure, I remember. A real doll. Mind if I see the arrest report? 
No, I'll pull her package. How come you drew her? She's got class. Yeah, she has class, but no money. Common failing. What about her boyfriend? I didn't know she had one. The guy that was with her when I picked her up. He's not broke. For that, I'm darn sure. Got it. Now, let's see. I picked up Diane Collins at 8.45 p.m. Tuesday. It's a Shea Bond. That's a restaurant up on the Sunset Strip. She was wearing a sapphire mixed stole reported stolen from Reichman's department store, where she works. With her was Edward Sims, salesman, office in downtown Los Angeles. And who reported the loss? He received a call at 8.17 from an informant. An informant? Who? Sorry, Mr. Matthews. What makes a gorgeous doll like that stoop so low? I don't get it. She didn't say she stole it, did she? Do you have the address of the man who was with her, Mr. Sims? Yeah, got it right here. Do I have it? Uh, he works for Silver Brothers Fabric House at 653 East Los Angeles Street. Did he offer any help to my client at the time? Help? He was in such a hurry to get lost, he didn't even offer to pay the check. I'll tell you what, if you're really interested, I'll give you a call just as soon as I get the price. Mr. Sims? Oh, excuse me, I didn't see you. Sit down, sit down. Yeah, thanks. I'm gonna have to tell you the same thing I told that other buyer. Our fall line won't be complete for another three or four weeks. However, this just arrived from the east. Now, just get the hand of that. Has the hand of an import, hasn't it? And it's wrinkle resistant. Now, we're going to push it so I can't give you an exclusive. I don't have the color line yet, but it'll have a full range. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Well, I've been busy. No, I haven't, Cora. I'm sorry, I'll be right off. Look, Cora, will you let me say something? Look, there's somebody in my office. Yeah, yeah, I'll call you. Bye. Oh, women. That one's old enough to be my mother. I know one who won't bother you for a while. Yeah, who's that? Diane Collins. Diane? Are you a cop? Should I be? What's the idea of passing yourself off as a buyer? Mr. Sims, you just didn't bother to ask. Well, now I'm asking. Public defender, huh? Look, I didn't steal that coat. I didn't say you did. Well, she said she borrowed it. From where? Well, the fur department at Reichman's. She works there as a model. That checks. How long have you known her? Well, I don't know, a couple of months. You do business with Reichman's? Sure, they're good customers. You know the head of the fur department there? Yeah, uh, Miss Nelson. Her first name? First name? Well, I don't know. I suppose you know that in your hurry to leave the night Diane was arrested, you forgot to pay your bill. Oh, say, that's, that's right. I'll take care of it right away. That won't be necessary. She paid it. <laughs> then why tell me? At least you could have given her a little moral support. You mean I should have gone with Diane to Lincoln Heights? It wouldn't have killed you. I can't get my name in the papers. I have my reputation to think of. Mr. Sims, from what I can see, you can't have very much of a reputation to protect. That heavenly? Your husband will fall in love with you all over again, Mrs. Peabody, with that on. That's fine, dear. Now spread the coat out so that Mrs. Peabody can see how beautifully the skins are matched. No, not like that. Remember how I taught you? Excuse me. Whoever told you you were a model? I'm sorry, Miss Nelson. I was doing my best. You have the grace of that dime. Now, they get off the dime, sister, you'll never work again in this town as long as I live. I'm sorry, Mrs. Peabody, but you see, I lost my other model uh, rather suddenly. Now, you see what a divide that is? Dear, why don't you have Mrs. Peabody slip the coat on? I'll be right back. May I help you? I hope so. I'm Miss Nelson at your service. What may I show you? Well, I'm afraid I didn't come here to buy anything. Oh? 
No, it's about Diane Collins. I've been assigned to defend her. Poor girl. How is she? She's all right. I'd give anything to have her back. Well, that's very nice of you. I'll tell Diane it'll give her something to look forward to. I didn't say that. I'm afraid I couldn't risk hiring her back. Not even if she's proved innocent? How could she be? She took a $2,000 first stole that belonged to the store. Well, Diane said that you gave her permission to wear that stole for the evening. Mr. Matthews, do you honestly believe that? Do you think I could risk loaning a mink stole to a girl who I'd only known a couple of months? Well, I wouldn't do that for the biggest star in Hollywood, unless her studio would guarantee it. Well, that makes sense, Miss Nelson. I'm sorry I haven't been much help. Well, thanks for your time. Oh, is it all right if I call you here? I may need some more information. Please do, anytime. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a customer waiting. We'll go right ahead. Oh, Miss Nelson. Yes? Do you know a Mr. Sims, a Mr. Edward Sims? Sims? I don't believe I do. I should have known better. It had to be another Corey he was talking to. Oh? Yes, he said that she was old enough to be his mother. On the way to see Diane Collins, there was one question uppermost in my mind. What was so important about that Tuesday night that made her want to wear the sapphire mink? Is this the first time you went out since coming to Los Angeles? No, but Eddie wanted me to look my best. He said we were going to an opening. Lots of important people, stars, you know. So you asked Miss Nelson to let you wear the fur that evening? Yes, and she gave me her permission. Won't you believe me? I do, but it's your word against Miss Nelson's in court. What am I going to do? I'd like to know what you did to get yourself into this mess. It's like a fairy tale that went crazy. I'd never dreamed of coming to Los Angeles. And then last December, because everyone told me I should, I entered the Miss Columbia beauty contest back home. Prize was $250, and I was to be queen of our floats in the Rose Parade New Year's Day. It happened so fast. The next thing I knew, I was riding down Colorado Boulevard. It was wonderful. I lined up right then. I wasn't going home. Not until I tried my luck, anyway. The man who ran the contest up north had given me a letter to a Mr. Rapp. He said Mr. Rapp would help get me in a big contest down here. Yeah. Sure. What do you mean they were tired? Listen, I picked those girls myself. Okay, so the local girl won. What do I care? You know the deal. I pick the girls and you take care of the judges. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you try to save a buck. Where did it get you? Next time, don't save a dime. I told you to sit down. Yes, sir. Who sent you from San Francisco? Well, I'm not from San Francisco. Well, you're wearing a hat, ain't you? Yes, is that wrong? Dames don't wear hats in L.A. In my book, you're from San Francisco. What do you want? Well, you see, I have this letter of introduction. Oh, no. Lady, what do I need with a letter of introduction? I got a desk full of them. I don't need any more. I was hoping, since I won a beauty contest back home, that you could... No kidding. Yes, and I was in the Rose Parade. Turn around. All right. No, it ain't all right. In the first place, you got too much class. In the second place, you ain't a doll. And a doll that ain't a doll in this business ain't got any business being in this business in the third place. You won't help me? Let me give you a tip, kid. Pretty faces are a dime a dozen. You look smart. Use your brains. Go on home. Yeah, Lou? Wow, well, he was disconnected. Look, I got a tip for you. I want we should run a beauty contest in San Francisco. And that was early in January. The rent was paid up to the end of the month, and I had about $30 left. Mr. Rapp wasn't going to send me home. Well, did you have any friends, relations here? No. I didn't know a living soul. $30 doesn't go very far these days. You know it. I ate enough carrots and bruised avocados to last me a lifetime. They say it's good for the eyesight. But not the waistline. I had to get a job. So you went to Reichman's? And 50 million other places. Always got the same answer. We're understaffed, overstaffed. Then I'll never forget it. It was January 29th. I had a couple of dollars and two days' rent left. <laughs> I did a crazy thing. Oh, but when a girl's in the dumps, it sometimes helps. 
They were having a clearance sale at Reisman's. Oh, I, I couldn't afford to buy anything. I just went to look. My, that's an attractive coat. Yes, isn't it? Do you mind if I see it? Oh, no, I was just going oh, to... No, keep it on. I can tell better. And this is on sale. Marked down to $295. Looks lovely on you. I think it would look even better on you. Why don't you try it on? I only have one, two girls and myself to conduct this sale. You'd think we were running a serve-yourself house. All right. Remember that at the next sales meeting. Your husband will love you in that. I should let Harry see it. It's his money. Well, why don't you ask him to put it aside for you? May I help you? I wonder if you'd mind holding this until my husband can get. Of course. Tomorrow, perhaps? Well, he could come on his lunch hour, if that's all right. That would be fine. I hope you didn't have to wait too long. We're dreadfully understaffed at the moment. Oh, no. This young lady was very helpful. Thank you, miss. You just made a sale, Miss Collins. Diane Collins. I really didn't. I was just trying it on, and the woman thought I... You don't need to apologize. This doesn't happen every day. Come with me. I want you to try something else on. Here, try this. Good. Now model it for me. Model? Haven't you ever done any modeling? Well, no, I haven't. Go on. Show me. Who's the new model? Stop drooling, darling. It doesn't become you. Turn around again, dear. You stood me up last night. Why? I was working. I'll make it up tonight. Promise? Do I ever let you down? Run along now. I want to talk to her. That's fine, dear. Very nice. Are you working? Well, at the moment, I'm... You're not. Good. You can start tomorrow morning. Nine o'clock sharp. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, help me. You found her, darling. You pick her up. I guess the shock was too much. I was so embarrassed. But you got the job. How did you like working for Miss Nelson? I loved it. She couldn't do enough for me. Oh. And Mr. Sims, did he come in often? Two or three times a week. To see you? Of course. We'd have coffee or lunch, and then he started taking me out to dinner. Did Miss Nelson know about this? Well, what difference should it make? Did she know who you had a date with the night you wore the sapphire mink? Yes. She even let me go home early. Said she'd punch me out. Well, how did you manage to get the fur out of the store without being questioned? Well, I put it on and walked out the front door. With Miss Nelson's permission? Yes. That's what I've been telling you. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And did Miss Nelson and Mr. Sims talk while you were about? Yes, they'd say hello or good morning, but that's about all. What's the matter? I was just wondering. Yes? What did they talk about when you weren't around? You told me you didn't know Cora Nelson. I never said that. When I asked you her first name, you said you didn't know it. Look, Mr. Matthews, I don't know anything about that coat. I just don't want to be involved. What does Cora Nelson have on you? Nothing. What's your relationship with her? None, if you must know. Because of the attention you pay to my client? No comment. Now, you live pretty high for a guy your age. Who's paying for it? Same answer. That got to be what you say when you're called as a witness? Now, look, Matthews, don't threaten me. I'm not threatening you. I'm telling you. When I ask a straight question, I want a straight answer. Look, you're, you're talking to the wrong party. Why don't you ask Cora Nelson? Ask her what happened Tuesday morning. What's that got to do with it? I'm sorry. That's all you're getting out of me. OK, if that's the way you want it. But I think you're heading for trouble. Why do you say that? You were with my client the night she was arrested. For all I know, you could be part of a racket. Oh, now, look, don't try and tie me into anything. What choice do you leave me? I'm going to see Miss Nelson. Maybe you better come along with me. Well, I, I can't walk out of here now. It's almost 5 o'clock. 
They won't mind if you leave a few minutes early. Well, that fur is very becoming on you, Miss Nelson. We carry the best line in town. Oh, very nice. You in a hurry? Oh, I really am. Big date? You stop fishing. I hope I don't spoil it for you. Spoil what? I have a message for you from Eddie Sims. I told you I didn't He said know to ask Cora Nelson. Ask her what happened that Tuesday morning. Some other time. Why not now, Cora? Eddie. I thought you said you didn't know Mr. Sims. Eddie, you shouldn't have come here. Now, why did you lie? He threatened me. I only suggested that you come along with me. That's not a threat. Now, about Diane Collins. Did you lie about her, too? You better tell him the truth, Cora. I'm not taking the rap for you. Eddie, you talk too much. You allowed her to wear that coat, and then you turned her in. Why? That's her story. You're a very smart woman, Miss Nelson. You knew there were no witnesses. That's right. No, that's wrong. Eddie, you weren't here the morning He wasn't I... here when you what? All right, what happened that Tuesday morning? Well, I now came here to tell her right, one at a time. Now, Miss Nelson, what about Eddie? I had a reason for saying I didn't know him. We wanted to keep it secret for business reasons for the time being. When he came here Tuesday morning, we had a little argument. I told him he was spending too much time in my department. Well, that's a lie. You never said that. Eddie, you see, Mr. Matthews, we love each other. We're planning to be married just as soon as... Me Eddie... marry you? Are you kidding? I'll tell you what happened Tuesday. I came here to tell her that she was not running my life. She wasn't going to tell me who I could or could not see. Just because she helped me get started in the business, she thought that gave her the right to own me. Well, I'm not her slave. She's nothing but a jealous old woman. Eddie, don't say that. Say what? Why don't you face it, Cora? Supposing you were in my position, had to pick between you and Diane Collins, who would you pick? Eddie, who helped you? Who got you started? Who introduced you to all the right people? What did Diane Collins ever do for you? Nothing. But she wouldn't have to. Eddie. You don't mean that. Look, I'm telling you for the last time, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of being pointed at and talked about every time I'm with you. You know what they're saying, don't you? They're saying, who's that young guy? Who is he? With that old woman, that's what they're saying. Now, are you satisfied, Mr. Matthews? Not quite. I'd like to be able to forget my office for just one split second. Now get out of here. I didn't mean to hurt the girl. I didn't hate Diane. Do you know what it is to be lonely? Feel that you're growing older. The world is passing you by. You have to have someone, anyone to hold on to. Like Eddie Sims. Even Eddie Sims. Well, did Diane Collins know about this? No. Then you shouldn't have taken it out on her. It wasn't her. Could have been anyone. I lied. I gave her permission. Thanks. You said I was smart. I'm not smart, Mr. Matthews. I've made a mess of everything. What can I do? One thing. What? Tell the district attorney. A few hours later, Diane Collins was given a full release. The case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender.